I'm Adrian from Wellby and I'm really excited that you guys are sharing your lunch time with us. We appreciate it and hopefully you'll find this to be pretty valuable. I'm very excited to have Amy Kurtz here today. Um, she is a best-selling author and health coach and now a, a health expert on Good Morning America. Um, <laughs> she's also a dear friend and um, we um, are sort of, we've gone through a lot of the same things. So the topic for discussion today is that Amy went through some pretty intense healthcare experiences, as did I, where we both really wanted to believe and try the conventional healthcare system and all of the best doctors that you can find. The problem was that we were not getting answers and we weren't getting to the root of our problems. And so since we both sort of entered the wellness world, we have had friends, family, acquaintances, who come to us and say, you know, I understand what you're saying. I want to get to the root cause of my exhaustion or my headaches or my psoriasis or my, you know, GI issues or my constipation or whatever it might be. Um, but the doctor that I have, and we all want to trust our doctor and switching costs seem high, isn't trying to do that necessarily, or I can't really figure out if they're trying to just give me something for my symptom or they're trying to get to the root of it. And so we thought that was worth having a discussion and sharing some of the tools that we've learned um, in that process to sort of sniff out if someone's going to really take a holistic approach or um, just try to, you know, pop a pill or, you know, cut it off or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So Amy. <laughs> Um, you have shared your whole health journey with me, which should be on Wellby in the next couple of weeks, which is pretty incredible. But during those pivotal times, you were only in your early 20s, right? And you're navigating this process and you have a father's doctor, like there's no reason that you would be skeptical or, you know, questioning at that age and that, you know, life experience. What made you sort of realize that this wasn't, that you weren't going to take this for an answer or like what was like the tip off that you needed to get different kinds of care? For me, it was that I went to the best specialists and nobody could provide me with an answer that made sense to me intuitively. Like they would give me options for how to treat certain things, but I had a uh, total body shutdown at 25 and because my situation was so extreme it really forced me into having to deal and deal quickly and I just wasn't getting answers fast enough so I knew that I had to look outside the box of what I know which is you take a pill to solve a problem or so I thought and it really wasn't working for me anymore and that's not to say that medicine isn't a really important part of the healing equation or anything like that. I totally believe that it is. But I needed to seek out other types of physicians and look into diet and how much that affects our body on a cellular level and take it into my own hands because the situation was so severe, it demanded it, and it forced me into caretaking mode in a way that I wasn't particularly used to, but just like had to be at that moment. Yeah. Um. So basically, you know, I think what you've experienced and what I've experienced is that it's first it starts out as one or two symptoms. Mm -hmm. And we're I think especially young women are really resilient and just sort of say like I can handle it or this yes. is normal. It's fine that I don't really go to the bathroom. It's fine that I have like acne or these rashes. It's fine that I'm tired, I didn't sleep that much last week, or, you know, we're always kind of making excuses instead of like putting the pieces together and saying, no, I shouldn't feel this way. I should go figure out the amazing things my body's telling me right now, which is that something's wrong. Like we have this great ability. And again, I think especially women because of having a period once a month, if it's not coming or it's having an issue, it's a great way of your body saying, help me, something isn't right. Um, and I think if we ignore those signs, then we can end up much worse off because of course, as long as it persists, it will get worse, <laughs> which is exactly what happened to Amy. Um, I think she, you were on pain medication for 10 years for back pain and it ended up being celiac disease. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just an amazing ability to manage and deal, which is in some scenarios great, but not when it comes to having symptoms where your body's screaming for help. 
So we mask, you know, I tell a funny story about being constipated in college for a year and taking chlorophyll and drinking aloe vera juice and doing all this fiber and just dealing and this big production only to find out that as soon as I stopped chewing gum and I was chewing way too much gum um, that heart had artificial sweetener in it everything worked again just a few days later so wow. um, yeah and it took me doing some research of my own after going to several doctors to even know that there was a connection mm. between artificial sweetener and constipation so what do you do right when you know something's wrong intuitively but you've gone to all those doctors who are the best of the best and they've tried all the conventional testing that can be done and are saying nothing's wrong with you like where do you go from there well amy tell us about the first step was it online research was it a family friend who'd gone through something similar that you switched over to more, you know, the functional medicine side? Yeah, um, I mean, the first place to start that I started and for you out there who might be not feeling well and feeling like that's your new normal is that you really are the captain of your ship and you can you should research as much as possible and find out everything there is to know. That does not mean go down the WebMD rabbit hole at 2 a.m. scrolling down your computer, but really become an expert on what's happening and what you think might be causing it and really make yourself empowered by learning as much as you possibly can because ultimately you're in charge of your treatment, right? Yeah. I mean, you can listen to someone and you should partner with someone that you absolutely trust that will help you get better, but it's really up to you. So I think that's my first. Yeah, and I think also something that Amy said to me, which was, this is for everybody, don't stop until you've gotten to the why. Um, I think it's really easy to go in and say, I have headaches, and someone gives you headache medication. It's really easy to go in and say, I'm constipated, and they give you things to make you go to the bathroom. It's really easy to say, and I was joking with Amy about this before, I have back pain. Oh, it's fine, we'll burn the nerve endings off the bottom of your spine and then it can't send pain signals to your brain <laughs> and that's actually true right it, in that scenario it wouldn't but at what cost um, you know disconnecting your body in that way and also not understanding why you're having pain is the biggest issue there is with that so um, I said you know politely no thank you um, I'm not bringing anything off of anything and I'm gonna get to the root of it and I discovered something by continuously searching um, and you have to be patient because sometimes it takes a couple of people to get to the right answer or in your case I saw 30 doctors 30 doctors, but she didn't give up and Who knows where you'd be now if you'd stopped at dr. 24, mm -hmm. you know, so it's worth it um, it gets expensive and we'll talk a little bit about how you might manage that process because a little, you know, a lot of doctors who are really in hot demand don't necessarily take insurance up front. And if they do, they they might um, just have it, you know, you might get reimbursed later. So here you are shelling out hundreds of dollars to basically just have a conversation with somebody who may or may not solve your problem. But if you don't, you're sort of stuck and you'll never really heal, right? So it's a really, it's very hard. I know that there's a couple of sort of like Kickstarter type, um, you know, communities online that will help people. Um, mm -hmm. I think Give Forward is the name of one where you're having a medical issue and you want to, you basically share it, and a lot of people donate to help you get to the to the end of it or oh, to the bottom amazing. of it, which is great. I mean, it's often used for you know um, people going through really serious stuff like cancer or whatever, but. You know, getting to the root of a health issue when you have debilitating systems and your body is shutting down the way yours did, I think would get anybody to donate. Um, so that's something. Um, you can speak to some of the professionals that you see to s explain the situation and like, you are the 15th doctor I've gone to about this issue and I am, you know, going broke or give your insurance company a call and see if there's anything that they can do to make it easier for you as you're, you know, sort of preemptively, mm -hmm. right? Do you have any other ideas on how you can max out your FSA and your HSA if you have one? I think this is the 
one of the hardest parts of all of it is being able to afford the care that you deserve to have and to find the right people. Also, I have one thing to say. You want to ask around and see who other people have seen and who comes highly recommended. You don't just want to visit anybody because when you have the complexity that chronic illness brings, you really need to think smartly about who you're going to see even. So it's important to ask questions of the people around you that you respect and say like, have you ever known somebody that's seen someone for this? Or really, like I said before, do your research so that you're not just going in blindly to so many doctors. If you have to figure out how to pay for a certain specialist, make sure they're well vetted and you know what they specialize in matches what you're seeking. So yeah, be thoughtful about it. It's really good advice. And if you don't know anybody who might be interested or somehow connected to, you know, integrated medicine or functional medicine or the wellness movement or whatever these different terms are, you know, just unfortunately, you know, do your research online and, and try to find things that would help guide you in the right direction. Um, and then just come armed, right? So you've got great information, you come in to see these doctors and I remember when I was in college and I told this story on getwellbe.com, um, it's a video, but when I didn't get my period for two years and I saw countless um, OBGYNs and endocrinologists about it, they all wanted to give me the birth control pill, but had I not done the research to know what actually would happen if I took the birth control pill and how it actually just masks the problem and, and doesn't get to the root cause of it, I might have just said fine, you know, and taken it knowing and trusting that they, that they knew best. And so having that conversation in a polite way, of course, I'm like, so walk me through this. If I take that, this is going to happen and that's going to happen and it still won't really get to the reason of, or get to the root cause of why I went away in the first place. And all the doctors, you know, they agree. They shake their head and say, that's true, but, you know, these are the tools in my toolbox and that's kind of all I have for you. So, you know, take it or leave it. But I think that conversation helps them to even understand, okay, you want more out of me? You're trying to get, you're going to try to go further. And if they can't go further with you, they will, t a good doctor will tell you so, yeah. which mm -hmm. is exactly what happened with Amy. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your book and also the whole, like it coming together and the promotional appearances and all of that. Well, I wrote Kicking Sick because it was the book that I so badly needed when I was struggling. I felt a lot of shame and isolation around the invisible illness that I was so um, mired by. And I wanted to create essentially a roadmap for young women to thrive through a difficult experience that could be traumatic or totally sidelining and make it transformative for themselves. So an action-packed um, resource guide that didn't leave them feeling hopeless or helpless, but actually helped them to get into the driver's seat and start to take control of their well-being in a way that we're not really taught to do. So I wanted it to be empowering. And I put all of the people that I learned from, whether that's through me seeing them as a doctor or just reading a book of theirs, um, I wanted, I just wanted to light the spark in people's head to catch one piece of advice if that's all you will find and have it change the way you think you can help yourself. Yeah, and it's, it's great. I mean, it's one of those things I told Amy, it's like a coffee table book where a lot of other wellness and health books are a commitment to a couple hundred pages. Um, and somebody who's never gone through chronic disease or have any symptoms of any kind can look through that and kind of be entertained for a couple of pages or 20 or 30 without having to commit, which I just love that format because Aww. when you keep chronic disease only with people who've gone through it, it doesn't make the impact that it needs to make on the healthcare system to transform it into one that's more holistic and trying to get to root cause. Mm -hmm. It stays within the small community of sick people who really care, but then the greater public doesn't care that much because they can't really relate or they've never really read about it or seen it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a you know, great way to make it more accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, so we talk a lot about being sick, right? But what I know and have seen is besides the more obvious things like Lyme disease or celiac disease or you know chronic fatigue syndrome or whatever it might be, um, people with the following things are sick in some way, right? And you have no energy, you have chronic headaches, you don't go to the bathroom normally, you have weird cravings, 
You have frequent infections, UTIs or sinus infections or whatever it might be. Um, you have some period of reproductive or sexual health issues. There's brain fog. You have constant pain, persistent anxiety and depression, unexplained weight loss gain. These are all, you know, acne, psoriasis, eczema, things that we just think of as sometimes standalone symptoms. And sometimes the cure is really easy, right? Like you're exhausted because you haven't been sleeping. Well, you sleep and you feel better. That's great. Um, but pay attention to these things. Like that's that's the main thing is that when it gets really bad and you're resilient and you're just trying to manage it is when you can have a total body shutdown like Amy did instead of just trying to get to the root cause of it maybe earlier when you can avoid a meltdown. Yeah, totally. And I think, you know, the body is a miraculous vessel that wants to work for you when you give it the opportunity to. If it's sending you a signal, you need to listen. I think like in this day and age, it's so hard to tune into ourselves, which places so much more importance on how we connect with our internal well-being so that we can show up for our exter exter what? I can't even external see. external world. So yeah. you like you have to really manage that connection with yourself because it's easy to just say, well, I don't know, it's just how I feel. I right. think that it's normal, but it really is important to have check-ins with yourself and say, like, is this normal? I really have been feeling exhausted for four months. That's not just, I didn't sleep well. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, getting an answer like, oh, you're just stressed or, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, wait it out. Mm -hmm. You know when something is right and wrong in your body. You're the only one in there. So mm -hmm. that's not an acceptable answer um, just because, you know, something isn't found in conventional blood work doesn't mean something isn't wrong with you if you know intuitively that it is. So keep searching, um, become well armed with information, no need to be combative because that can turn you know potential practitioners and doctors off but very firm in your understanding of things and your commitment to getting to the root cause. It's really important to figure out what you need in a person to partner with you to get yourself well. And I think oftentimes we feel um, powerless in a situation where we're chronically ill and we're trying to find the best possible person that might really not be the best possible person for you. So I think a good piece of advice is to really check in with yourself and say, what qualities do I need in a person that I'm gonna fully trust so that I can get out of management and I can really start to heal. And that's something to really think about, like what is important to you, what might be super important to me might be very different from what's important to Adrian, but it's important to get clear with yourself because you do have a say in all of it. And a lot of times we feel like we don't. Exactly. So a follow-up question I have for you on that is when you went to your, you know, 25th, 27th, 29th, 30th doctor, what were the, like, you have to learn a you know, the answers to slash, like the questions that you had to ask to sniff out, is this somebody that I can partner with? Is this somebody who's gonna give me all the things I need to heal? For me, it was how they approached um, my condition because I had so many pieces to a puzzle that was so confusing. I really needed to choose someone that could give me answers as to why they thought it all was happening because it clearly was so interconnected. My thyroid was giving out because my digestive system was under attack and you know all these things. So um, I needed to really understand how they thought outside the box and I wanted to hear them really say that. But it's important to ask if they want to treat you with something, why should I use this, what should I expect to feel, what could potential side effects be. Um, let's say it's an antibiotic or something, what is this doing to my gut flora? It's important to, like we said before, come prepared right. to ask questions. So I actually wrote a couple of other questions besides the ones that Amy just mentioned down. Um, when you are going to a doctor, a couple of great things to ask. Is this the root cause of my problem when you get a diagnosis? And will it cure my issue rather than manage the symptoms of it? And if you're gonna have an antibiotic, making sure before you leave the office, is my issue confirmed via a test to be bacterial and not viral? And mm. what probiotic do you recommend? Or what, to, what should I do for my gut to protect the good bacteria in my gut so that I don't you know, destroy my immune system afterward? Is there something non-chemical that you might recommend if I'm not interested in that approach? You know, I'm concerned about too much radiation. Um, can you explain to me 
if this x-ray is totally necessary or if I could mail you one that was just died, you know, a month ago. Do you consider yourself an integrative or functional medicine doctor? If I decide that I don't want to go a surgery route, for example, what else would you recommend trying before it comes to that? So that's kind of like a tool belt and you can use those um, to try to sniff out a great partner. Mm -hmm. How do you get Welby, as we say? What is your go-to, can't-miss wellness routine to keep yourself well? I eat a highly plant-based diet. I'm very careful about the food that I eat. I meditate every single day. It's a non-negotiable for me. I can be totally like anxious if I don't do it, and it really calms my whole nervous system down. It's totally changed everything for me. And I also try to practice one act of self-care at least per day and schedule it in for myself so that it's something that I'm doing for myself that makes me feel good. So that could be anything from taking a hot detox bath or um, getting a massage or taking a walk in the park and unplugging from my cell phone. I try to really, really stay committed to doing at least one thing a day that's a total um, unplugging for me incredibly important and things that I have not mastered myself. What do you do? A couple of things that I do, I have a room temperature a glass of lemon water first thing in the morning every morning to kind of kickstart <laughs> my digestive system and my metabolism. Um, I think that's sort of a, a Chinese medicine practice but I think it, it should be really considered works. a global health practice yeah. at this point. Um, I take a probiotic first thing in the morning. Um, I try to eat a lot of probiotic foods but I also take a supplement just in case it's one of those days where I'm running around and don't necessarily get to plan or you know didn't take the time if you know something happens mm -hmm. to bring all of my own meals and try to walk as much as I humanly possibly can <laughs> it's a big thing for me both for relaxing peace of mind being outside fresh air time to myself mm. um, and then just movement because I have back and hip pain and so movement is the greatest thing that I can do and sitting is the worst. Mm -hmm. um, so you know those are some of the things that I do. Um, diet is hugely important. Um, so I uh, you know do everything I can to make sure that every single thing that goes in is nourishing and those things that aren't aren't but you know we're all human and sometimes mm -hmm. there are better days and there are worse days. Mm -hmm. So those are mine. Yeah. Those are good. <laughs> <laughs> Between the two of us we got it covered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, meditation is so hugely important as is self-care and it's been really a challenge for me because I don't I haven't made the mental um, commitment to myself yet mm -hmm. and I really want to but you know it's also important to recognize that you know you're, it's a journey and not all of us who are working in wellness or whatever else like are doing it perfectly and so even if you can't you know you're not exercising as much as you'd like or you're not meditating as much as you'd like, like we're all dealing with different things. It's fine. As long as you're always improving, that's really what counts. And I always say that healing is a journey. It's not a destination. And you need your time, your love, and your attention to get yourself better. And it takes a lot of dedication, but we're all human. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You need the dedication, but when you slip up, just know that we all slip up. Yes. <laughs> so Amy, thank you so much for thank joining you. us today. Everybody should definitely pick up kicking sick and look for Amy on Good Morning America if you watch it because at some point I'm sure it'll be on again no, so you're now an expert well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, have a great rest of your day and a great weekend.